on the box saga the oldest story in the world this small chapter is called uh, the plan locked into the root language it's important to kind of think about this because these people when they set up the first um, symbols for language and put them into a, an alfarnes bet or alphabet um, it wasn't arbitrary. They had a beautiful system in the sounds itself and the symbols themselves that when you know the symbols and what sounds go with them, those sounds actually tell a story. So it's a multi-layered piece of art, this alphabet and this, this saga. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, I have to um, give give my credit to uh, my my friend Jim Chesner. He's talked to me a few times about this and explained some of this to me. If you don't have a background in etymology, some of these links might be hard to make, but, um, but since I do, I actually see the logic in this system. So here we go. The Osir, the people from Odin Ma, who lived near the axis of the planet, were divided into two castes. The first was the Pirouette family, consisting of a grandfather, which is called Gube, and a grandmother, which is called Guma. Their 12th son was Sol Bakken Balder. He has many titles, many names, and within this book is referred to as Lemminkainen. His lady, which is a Joutsen, referred to in this book as Svan, bore him 12 sons and seven daughters, who each had a title. Little pause here. Soul Bakken Balder. I know the soul part refers to the sun. And Bach Bakken is the the male aspect of breedership, like a, like a buck, like a male deer or elk. It's Bach, Buck. Lemminkainen is means the same thing. It's the breeder for the male line. Now his lady is a swan, which is where we get the word swan. And I believe the symbol for that femininity in this story is actually a swan. You know, beautiful, long, elegant swan. Now there's 12 sons and seven daughters that she, she bears. And there's a system of, of breedership. So there's a reason why they, they try to make 12 sons and seven daughters. There's a system. The first son and daughter of the family were the king, Urs or Ars, and Queen, Mai, referred to as Seppo and Maya. The twelfth son would be the next Lemminkainen and would continue the family line by having children with his own Svan as soon as he reached the age of 27. The king and queen did not have any children, nor did the other brothers and sisters. However, the first 11 Brothers and seven sisters in the Bach family did play another very important role in the procreation system. This will be explained in later detail, describing the offering in a later chapter. Frey was the first Bach and later became the first Gube. Freya became the first Guma. So remember, Gube and Guma are grandmother and grand or grandfather and grandmother. So the first two humans. At some point, became the first two grandparents. The people born outside of Udinma were called Vaner, V-A-N-E-R. The Svan, who was symbolized as Swan, was chosen for being the most beautiful and healthiest lady from the Vaner. Lemminkainen and Svan are many, had many children, but since only the twelfth son would have children himself, there would not be enough offspring to populate the whole planet. According to the plan within the root language, a second caste known as the Rosette family, or family of roses, was then created. The head of this family was the same Lemminkainen of the Pirouette family. So a little side there, it's good to know that there's two different families which begin the different castes, the different caste systems. So it starts with the Osir, which is where we kind of get the term. The Osir kind of means the gods, but not in the sense that the gods are you know, paranormal. It's the it's the mother and father of all people, the all father, the all mother. Sometimes in the Viking mythology and the Viking lore, they they tend to say the word Osir as if they were like 
beyond human. But when you understand this story and then look into the Norse mythology, you start to see how it makes sense and how over time the mythology's kind of changed. The Osir are kind of like the original mother and father, the original bloodline or sperm line of where all humans come from. So the Osir are in Udinma and then the, they are the Pirouette family and then the same breeder or Lemminkainen starts another family called the Rosette family. So it's the same seed from the beginning, but two different castes or two different branches, two different families. Lemminkainen had a harem of women called Disa or Disor if plural. The first Disor were the daughters who came after the first seven daughters of Frey and Freya. After the Desor were the daughters of the previous Desor and Lemminkainen. Lemminkainen had children with the Desor, turning the Desor into stem mothers. The children of Lemminkainen and Desor were also Aser because they were born in Odinma or Udinma and belonged to the Rosette family. Okay, that's kind of what I just said. I guess I should have just kept reading. There were eight future possibilities for the children of the Desa and Lemminkainen. If they had a boy, he possessed the physical attributes of children maker, and he was given the title of Rabi. He would be assigned a, a ringland outside of Udinma, where he would hold court and be an all father. A ringland is one of the many territories outside of Udinma of approximately the same size where the Rabi and brother and sister would hold court. If a boy turned out to be an unsuitable children maker, he had three options. He could become a Nar in AR, which, in which case he was also sent to a ringland as each court also had a Nar. The word Nar, the root of that is Na in A and that means knowledge. So, so Na means knowledge in the, in the sound system. The next possibilities would be for the boy to become a Tor or a Tear. If the Disa and Lemminkainen gave birth to a girl with the desired physical attributes, she would be a Disa herself and have children with the Lemminkainen. If she was a girl who was seen as unfit to have children, she could be a Sinare. Like the Nar boys, the Sinare were sent outside to a ringland to hold court. If she was a girl, she could also be a Tora or a Tira. It is said that the Tor and Tora and Tyr and Tira, who were all members of the Rosette family, could travel freely around the world as long as half of them remained in Udinma. In the Rosette family, there were altogether 80 Tor, Tora, Tyr, and Tira. The Pirouette family, consisting of Lemminkainen, his 11 older brothers and sisters, and 11 older brothers and seven sisters, as well as the Svan, never left Udinma while they were fulfilling their respective roles in the procreative system. So these were the people born in Udinma called the Aser, belonging to the Pirouette and Rosette families and who spoke the root language. There's much more to say about them, but first let's have a look at those born outside of Udinma, who as mentioned, were known as the Vaughn or Vonner people. Positioned in a ring or a circle outside of Udinma were six ringlands of the same size as Udinma. 250 kilometers in diameter. Outside this ring, more rings were formed and through repetition of this structure, the planet was populated. All the ringlands together resembled a beehive. Each ringland had a court where Ravi, born in Odinma, reside with his brother, the Nar, and his sister, the Sinari. Another little side, the word Ravi, which is spelled R-A-B-I, I believe is eventually becomes the word Rabbi. It has changed its meaning, you know, to sort of a, let's see, a priest class kind of thing. But originally it was a breeder. Uh, and so we also see, like in some of my other videos and some of my other uh, pointed towards other alternative historians that show that the, the ancient languages of the Levant came from Northern Europe. So you can see here the link, the word Rabi is much older than the word Rabbi because these languages came from the North, the North Pole, and spread throughout the world over time. The role of the Rabi was to create the next caste called Yarlet. He 
He had children with the woman from the Jarl who would, were suitable to become mothers. If the Jarl sons of the Ravi and Jarl women were found to be suitable to have children, they would have them with women from the caste below called the Karlet. The children born from the Jarl men and Karl women belonged to the Karlet caste. Karl sons who were suitable to have children would in turn have them with women from the caste below called Trellet or Trell. However, the Trell men were not children makers. You can kind of also see how certain people's last names, uh, be, you know, represent their ancient heritage. Like I'm sure you've heard the name Carlson or Jarlson, and you know for sure they come from a Scandinavian background. Um, but you can also tell that what what class of, of system their family line might have been in way back. If during this paradise time you happen to be a trail boy or girl belonging to the trailette or trail fifth class, your father would be a Carl belonging to the Carlet, the fourth class. Your grandfather would be a Jarl belonging to the Jarlet, the third class. The father of the Jarl, your great grandfather would be the Rabi of your Ringland. The father of this Rabi would be the Lemminkainen, or is the Lemminkainen, the All Father in Hell, who would be your great grandfather. Thus, all the people on the planet were related to each other and were direct descendants of the Lemminkainen. The sperm line that was passed down from Lemminkainen through the different castes is the river of eternal life flowing southwards from hell. Therefore, if we were to look for the geographical location of the so-called fountain of youth, the source of eternal life, we would find it in hell, which, as mentioned before, was the exact North Pole during paradise time. According to the heathen understanding, the reason for this hierarchical order of reproduction is that all people possess the soul, and in root, soul is soul, S-O-L. So your S-O-U-L is actually originally the soul or the sun, which translates as the sun in the sky. As we explained in the chapter of the offering, Lemminkainen had access to the most complete and pure soul or sun by having children with the Disa, and he transfers the soul or sun through the sperm or sperma to the second caste, the rosette. As an example of how the root language works, the word sperma breaks down as follows. S in the, the sound system, the alphabet system. So the letter S equals sun or means sun, the creative force. P-E-R, pair, is the root for father. Like in Latin, they say uh, grandpa, or grandpere, or monpere, my father. So you can also see how Latin is a much younger language than this root language. So pair means the all father, and ma obviously means mother and refers to the earth, mother earth. So we got S, pair, ma. So we have son, father, and mother all together. That's what sperm means. That's what sperma means, which is very interesting. The sons of the Lemminkainen and Disa, therefore, are bestowed with this soul, divided into two. When these Rabi have children with women from the Jarl caste, the soul is thus divided once more. The Jarl men will then have children with the women from the Karl caste, and again the soul is divided. The Karl men have children with the Trell women, dividing the soul once more. As mentioned, the Trell men did not have children. This is where the Bach stops, so to speak. The reason... For this was the belief that the soul of the Lemminkainen is now so divided that if the Trell had children, they would not have enough soul. Remember that. Originally, the human race was a hybrid between an ape and a goat. Through the system of selecting selective breeding, the race was stabilized and kept healthy and beautiful. This stabilization came from the Bach family and the health and beauty from the genes of the Svan. Many rituals and festivals played a role in both the judging of those deemed suitable for the task of reproduction and the choice made by women of which man from the caste above would become the father of their children. In each ringland, there were special places where people would gather to conduct these rituals. The festivals were held at particular times during the year and all the people of the ringlands attending would play a role in the events. For the heathen people, the production of the next generation was the single most important responsibility in their lives, and thus the festivals and other ritualized actions that were involved in this task were considered the most important. 
The Bach saga gives a detailed explanation of these vital events in another part of the story. Even those who did not have children of their own would play important roles in these events. This also involves countless rituals that will be dealt with later on in this book. Okay, so this chapter is about the system, the different caste systems of procreation and breeding. Hopefully, it kind of piques some interest in certain people. Maybe they'll go look at this saga for themselves. All right, thank you.